The wildflowers and bluebonnets are starting to bloom here in Texas, and it's got me thinking a lot about the exterior of the cottage, from paint and trim color to porch design and inspiration. So let's design it together. Hi, so we have been doing so much demo, and actually yesterday did something very exciting, which you will see on the new vlog on Tuesday. And yes, that's a huge, please go look at the vlog channel. I post tons of other content there as well, from behind the scenes to renovations to just more about everything. <laughs> and I don't know about you guys, but I personally love to watch vlogs. So go check it out. I post once a week there as well. So it's like a middle of the week upload. So you will see on Tuesday what I did yesterday, but it also, made my hands swollen and I got two blisters. It almost like <laughs> so I'm taking that as a big sign to chill out on the demo for just a few days, let my hand heal. My dad thinks that my gloves were a little too big maybe, so they kind of rubbed where I needed to use the crowbar. So I can't use baby crow for a while. So we're in San Antonio right now because I have been trying to get my hands on samples of ex exterior things like the siding and the roofing that we want to use for the guest cottages. My mom is here, say hi. Hello. <laughs> we did some research online and found a building supply place closer to San Antonio that had all of the different brands that we were looking at. We just pulled up and we don't know if they're gonna let us in. <laughs> we think it's kind of like contractors only, but you know, you know, you gotta try things. This is dimensional shingles. Some are more designer, some are more basic, like that's the more basic one that I've been looking at. I'm just so happy we actually got samples because God, it's been so hard. But look, we finally got a book of all the shingle colors and these they're not producing really because they're more specialty colors, but all of these are their more core stuff but some may be more readily available than others. Here is charcoal. So this is the dark. Also a couple of comments from you guys saying that if we go with a dark, dark roof that it would heat up the house. And my mom looked it up and it's eight degrees hotter. So you're right, eight degrees isn't bad though, especially if it's insulated properly. This is weathered wood. So you can see the difference. It's got a lot more warmth in it, used a lot, so it's gonna be easy to get. I was looking at this. I kind of get into this. It's called sand dune. It's got some softness to it. You can see how it kind of gradually gets softer, but look how mixed it looks. It kind of looks busy. So I don't think I'm into that, even though I like the shade. I can't believe we finally got our hands on samples. At least I got samples of the shingles and different two different companies I was looking at. One was the Timberline architectural shingle. They have like most common colors like weathered wood and charcoal and bark wood. Those are really common. They're one, the ones that they're still manufacturing all the time, which every house, we're talking about it in there, every house is gonna end up starting to look the same because every house is gonna have the same <laughs> color roofs, but it's what you can get. Also the Cambridge Ico collection, they have similar colors. They also have these dual black and gray and weathered wood as well. And then they also have a beech wood, but they don't sell, only available in Eastern Europe, USA, but it was like a lighter color. I don't know, it was just kind of playing with the idea. So now that we have samples, I can actually kind of put things together and really make a decision. He's gonna ask around and see if he can get any hardy plank samples. I ordered them three weeks ago and they still aren't here. Okay, so I'm at Lowe's. Just by chance, I wanted to see if they had the fiber cement exterior siding, and they do, but it's only the paintable version. At least I can see the texture and see what it would look like. Horrible yellow color, but you can see that the definition is there. So it does look and feel like wood, but it's so much more durable. So it says fire resistant, stands up to storms and weather, won't be eaten by insects or animals, water resistant to protect against swelling, warping, cracking, and resist small damage. It's been a few days and my hand is healing up really nicely. My fingers aren't swollen anymore, so, well, not as swollen, so I could actually get my rings on. I was working really hard. But I'm so glad that we finally got our hands on some samples for the shingles. I'm definitely still leaning towards weathered wood. I think it looks most like my inspiration, the metal color that was on the inspiration for the guest cottages. So it's not dark, dark, dark charcoal black, it's 
got some warmth to it. Um, I think it just looks really tonal and pretty. And I think it would be really pretty with a white exterior color. Also an exciting progress update on demo for the outside. My dad had to do some maintenance on his backhoe. So he was finally able to get those porches, those add-ons that Romeo helped me break down while he was here a few weeks ago. We pulled those off, all the porches off. It's cleaning up so well. And the majority of what needs to come off for the proper addition that we're building is off. So I'm like really excited that it's finally starting to get there. We're finally getting everything off that we need off. I still have one wall that I need to demo. And since my hand's doing better, I think I'm gonna be able to tackle it this week, which I'm really excited about. And then all the demo is done for the most part. There's still a few things, but they're for the most part. It's spring and the wildflowers are starting to grow. It kind of just got me started thinking about exterior for the main house. There's just so many design decisions that we need to make. So when someone asks me, like my mom was like, oh, what are you gonna do for the porch? Oh, what are you gonna do for this? And I'm like, well, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. So I'm kind of jumping around from different aspects of the house, trying to wrap my head around Okay, I kind of have an idea what I want to do for this. I kind of have an idea what I want to do for that. So I asked the historical society if they had any historical photos or anything documented for the house since it was built in 1910. I was like, maybe they have something. First picture that they had was April, 1979, which the house was gosh, 70 years old by then. You can see that it had a shingle roof. It didn't have the metal roof. They replaced that later on It had the shingle roof. You can even see that the chimneys that they removed later on from the house and up above when they replaced the roof are still there. So you can kind of see where they were placed and the house and the trim were all white with colored shutters. And they have all of those decorative shingles in the gables, which were all original, which we still have today. They had this cute picket fence and the porch had original turned posts on the porch, but they had, um, they didn't have the railing that they have now. It was more solid. It was more like, lack of a better word, like shiplap, like just like boards that made it more solid. And the porch roof looks just as bad as it does now. So they may not have ever replaced that because it's in pretty bad shape now. The second photo and survey that they took was in June 1997. It looks like they removed the shutters and painted the trim color. So they kind of inverted the color palette. The door still looks like it's all white. But then they removed the solid porch railing that they had before and added the shrubs in the front. And I think that those shrubs were there up until they were planning on listing the house when they were cleaning up the property. And then eventually they did replace the roof to metal and not the shingles. And we know for a fact that the house used to be three colors at least. So when I was removing some of the trim in the laundry room, because that's going to be an additional part that we take off, you could tell all the different layers and the colors that it used to be painted. So it was definitely white at one time. And I think that that was the original color, which makes me happy because I definitely want it white. Then they painted it a green color. And now what the color is now, which is like a light creamy yellow. It's not, it's not cute. It's not good. And then painted the turquoise trim. We picked up the shingle colors for the guest cottage roof. The main house will stay with the metal roof. I'll keep obviously what's existing on the main house and then extend the metal roof to the addition. We are keeping wood siding on the main house, but the guest cottages will be hardy plank, which is a fiber cement siding. So we've got to figure out what color we're going to paint the house. I definitely wanted a white. Whites come in a plethora of color. They can have different undertones, different shades, all about picking the right white for the house. I have this printed out on my mood board. I've loved this particular inspiration picture since we bought the house. And what I love most about it is the creamy white exterior with the rich wood tone, which is represented in the inside of the house. And then the metal roof, which is the metal roof that we have on our house right now. So this is definitely my main source of inspiration, but I wanna look on Pinterest. I already have a comfort cottage board. If you guys wanna follow along on some things that I'm saving when I'm on my phone or just looking for inspiration, I always save anything on that specific board. So you guys can follow along on my Pinterest. It's Exo McKenna. So this was the original inspiration. I love the floor. I love the rich tone wood on the porch floor. I love how simple the posts are for the porch, but I do realize that we already have 
upturned wood posts on the cottage. I don't love that the windows just kind of blend into the house itself. I want a little more contrast than that, but that for sure is one. The first thing that I really do is find a picture that I like and then scroll down to see if there are any more similar pictures that are like that one. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not seeing, I love this one. I think I'm just really attracted to that darker wood contrast. I don't love the blue shutters on that though. Ooh, what's this? Ooh, this is really pretty actually with the dark door, the white windows with the shutters that are really contrasting and the brick floor. Oh, that's really pretty. That looks a little, a tad more New Orleans than I wanted to go with the brick because I want to incorporate the limestone that's in town. So I think that may fight each other a little bit. Um, even though I'm totally doing that in the fireplace. So maybe not, <laughs> maybe we could totally do that. White house exterior porches. Here is a house and don't look at the green door. I'm not into that, but you can see that this one has black windows, like just the, the metal or the wood on the inside is black. And then the trim around it is all white. I feel like I like this more than I've liked that in the past, just because it has some board and batten and it has a lot of texture on the white, so it doesn't look so bare. Ever since I put black windows in our house in LA, I've loved it. I love that you're not distracted by the window and you can look right out and see trees and greenery and the outdoors instead of being so distracted by these lines in your vision. I have about five inch trim that's going around that black window. It's really what we need to figure out if it's going to be black, if it's gonna be the same color as the house, if I want it a slightly more neutral color just to add dimension. So gosh, here's the same shape house as as, as the cottage. Oh, okay, this is actually a great picture to see on that front gable, that front peak that comes out. We have one window in the dining room. We have one on each side as well, but we have one in the front. Originally in my plans, I was going to put three windows across there to really let in a lot of light into that side of the house. But if you look on the opposite side, underneath the porch, I'm gonna have three windows there and then plus the front door with all the windows around it with the transom and then the two side windows. I felt like having three on the front is just like too much, but I think that one is not enough. So I talked to my mom about it and we kind of like, well, two is gonna look nice. This is pretty much how it would look. Sometimes I get excited when I can't find exact inspiration for what I'm looking for. It means that it's unique and it means that it hasn't really been done in a big way. It hasn't been overdone. Definitely our must haves are a find a really good white exterior paint for the wood siding. Pull the rich wood tone from that's from the inside on the, all the wainscoting and all the trim outside as well to tie those two spaces in. And then to further contrast both of those, we're gonna do black windows on the inside. So the real question is, what are we gonna do on the trim? You guys see this house? You see how the trim is black and the house is white? It's just very contrasting. So I don't think that I want that. And then this house, it doesn't have exactly black windows, but it has those black screens. So you can kind of see what it would look like if there were just black windows, like the inside was painted black, but the trim was all the same color as the house. To me, it looks a little bare. So I definitely want a difference between the trim color and the house, but I want it to be subtle. Here's a house with black windows inside white trim, white house, but it has board and batten, which is giving it texture, but it still looks bare to me. There's not much shadowing or differentiation. It's very bright today. Let's talk through the porch. Does it look great right now? I think that that's why the porch and exterior is on my mind is because it just, it's looking a little sad. So one thing that I've noticed about the porch roof is that it's on the lower side. And of course it slants down. It comes down at an angle so that the rain and the water can run off. And then so does the floor that has to happen for it to have natural runoff. But it overall is just very short. And I think you see that there's a space above the porch roof and then underneath the metal roof on top of the actual house. I would like, since we're gonna have to redo the whole thing anyways, I'd like to raise it up because that's every bit of a foot more. So imagine there being a foot more above your head. That can make a big difference. Another thing that's odd about the porch is that the turned wood posts 
are on the smaller side for the scale of the house. They're very skinny. None of this is original. All of these, I don't like them. <laughs> All of these are gonna go. This is gonna go, not concrete. Obviously the floor is in horrible condition. It's all rotten along the edges. We're gonna be completely redoing that. Something that is original that my mom hates, and I'll blame it on my mom. <laughs> she does not like the diamonds. One, two, three. My mom's going like this, <laughs> take them down. Maybe if they were more tonal, we can keep them. Those little gingerbread kind of details in between were not original. They're not in the pictures from 79. To run like 30 minutes down the street up to Fredericksburg to get some Benjamin Moore paint colors. There are quite a large amount of paint colors that I want to try from Benjamin Moore. And I do want to try Alabaster from Sherwin-Williams, which is what Joanna Gaines painted her house white. So we've got to try that one too, but Sherwin-Williams is like a completely opposite direction. There are a couple of colors that I know I want for sure. One is Dove White. I want to try White, White Dove. White Dove. The White Dove samples out. <laughs> Dove Wing is what I used in Denise's living room, a recent living room makeover. I've used Balboa Mist before. Okay, we're getting a lot of different ones to try, six actually, in different tones. Thank you so much. Okay, and we're back. We've got six colors that I wanna test. And I'm painting them right on the front of the house. It, I mean, you're not gonna know, it's not gonna be like all these crazy colors swatched. It's all gonna be white, no one's gonna notice, but it is gonna stay like that for a while. So, we've got Simply White, Ballet White, White Dove, Olympic Mountains, Swiss Coffee, and finally, Sea Pearl or China White. They're the same color. First up, Simply White. It's crazy how different it looks than the house is painted now. You can tell that it's not white. Okay, next we're gonna do ballet white and we're just gonna keep going. My mom's gonna help me so we can get them all up. <laughs> Got it all on there, let's step back. I'm gonna shoot this at different times of day so hopefully I can pick it up on camera for you guys. It's even really bright for us to look at right now but it's important to see it when it's bright, when it's golden hour, when it's, you know, morning. Um, that's why I painted it on the front because this is where we get the most sunlight. Here are my first thoughts. Simply White has a little bit of pink undertone in this Bride of Light. I'm seeing a little bit of pink. And Ballet White actually looks really, you can't even really tell, the, I can tell the difference from the original house color, but it's the closest that we've picked, uh, so which is a no, because I actually don't like the color of the existing house. White Dove is the third one. Of all of them, it has the most green undertone, which I actually like. I like things that are on the more uh, green side. Fourth one down here is Olympic Mountains. It showing up as a little bit lavender. The middle one is Swiss Coffee. It's more of a blue green undertone. And then all the way on the end is Sea Pearl or China White. That has the most blue to me. Kinsley and I, she came. Kinsley and I just drove back up at the house. It's about 30 minutes until sunset. So we wanted to look at this time of day and then I'll come back in the morning. So let's see what we think now. Especially when picking paint colors, especially white paint colors for the exterior of your house. I've been researching a lot and you wanna pay attention to the brightness scale. So that it's called LRV, light reflectance value. It's basically the light that's reflected from the paint when light is is sh shined at the paint past the house and it's in the sun and it's just kind of blinding to look at that's what we want to pay attention to we don't want it I don't like anything overly bright like that I like it more calm and muted so I'll put all of the paint values and the names I think I'm leaning towards sea pearl every time I think that Swiss coffee is too bright here are the colors in the morning I think I'm leaning towards white dove which is the top right one i think it has the most calm even though the lrv on white dove is more slightly more than swiss coffee which is here in the middle i still think it looks the most complimenting to the wood bottom left is out completely top left is simply white 
I haven't been liking that one at any times of day. It hasn't been really exciting me, so that one's out. The middle one is Ballet White. That's out. It looks most like the house. So we're really just picking between these three right now. This has so much lavender in it. Can you guys see that lavender? I'm thinking I like White Dove. So McKenna and Kinsley from the past here, but we hope you guys enjoyed this video and just kind of thinking through the exterior and making all of the decisions around the house or priming my brain to make decisions around the house while I'm recuperating from demo. But we hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. If you haven't caught up on any of the other renovation videos, like last week we started the kitchen reno video series, which I'm really excited about. I'll leave all of those videos down below for you guys to check out. Out. And if you are not already subscribed, you should be. Hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification so you know exactly when I upload every Sunday here on the main channel and every Tuesday or Wednesday over on the vlog channel. And we will see you guys next week. Can you say bye? Say bye, guys. Say bye. Bye, guys. Say bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs> bye, guys. Imagine we are like, oh, we love Swiss coffee, but it's actually Olympic Mountains. That would be horrible.